You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That rockin' tune means we're back once again. Yep, it's time for the option block, everyone's favorite bi-weekly source for all things options related. Hot off the heels of Twifo, new to its new Thursday time at uh, 1 30 p.m. Central. We're talking about maybe moving the option block as well. You guys, let us know if you prefer where it is now, 3 o'clock, so right as the markets are closing. Or if you like it more midday, because given our other broadcast schedule, probably would have to move to sometime Maybe around noon on Mondays and Thursdays, you know, might, might, might be interesting. Maybe maybe uh, mix things up a little bit. It's always fun Been doing it this time forever, though. So if you guys are used to that, let us know what you think. Uh, if you prefer this time or if maybe during when the markets are open, you guys prefer. We're kind of open. We're playing around with some fun stuff here on the old network. You guys, that means, of course, at least for the time being, you guys can still join us live every Monday and Thursday, uh, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern via Mixler. Of course, you can always get the podcast there on uh, theoptionsinsider.com or via your favorite device of choice. Of course, if we move the show earlier, there's a chance. There's a chance maybe you'll get that uh, podcast turned around for you same day, which would be kind of interesting. Maybe so you can, if you get podcast listeners, I know that's most of you. Uh, maybe you can get it, you know, later that same day on Thursday, which would be cool, or Monday, uh, rather than waiting till the next morning. So interesting stuff. Perhaps let us know your thoughts there as we keep on rolling. Of course, speaking of thoughts, hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom. We do, yes, indeed, we do like to hear from you guys. And joining me on the program today, let's spin the wheel. I think we go all the way out to Grand Haven, Michigan, then back to somewhere in Chicago or the nearby environs where we are joined. That All that dripping means we are joined by the greasiest of meatballs. Yes, it's grease time. Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Lyon Capital. He of the uh, VXX puts fame slash infamy. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show, sir. Hey, how are you? It's good to, be, good to be back. Good to be here. Uh, the world is awesome, and it, let's give it a cheer. The world is awesome. Let's give it a cheer. By the way, we've gotten more comments and questions and follow-ups on those freaking VXX puts than like anything else. On those else. penny puts. You haven't been on Volviews in a while. This has been, it's been the nonstop talk of everybody uh, who's writing into to, the show. I can't wait. I buy I them. Wait. I'm buying more of them. I'm buying them like you guys. I'm selling them. Why would people buy these? All, you name it. Just uh, I mean, my favorite one guy, what did he say? One guy said, oh, he went on an Imelda Marcos shoes style spending buying spree. Of those of those puts, <laughs> thirteen hundred of them traded today. <laughs> Maybe that was him. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there were some. There are a lot of interesting trades in VXX today. I'll tell you about what I was doing, uh, we'll, or what should we save it for uh, Vol views? We'll, we'll do. A, we can touch on it a little bit here today, uh, and then we'll, right. do, we'll do some more tomorrow. We all we always mixing it up. A lot of fun stuff. Speaking of mixing it up, uh, we're not mixing it up. We're keeping it the same with our next our next cohort here, Mister Uncle Mike Tusaw of uh, of I almost said RCM, but he still works at RCM, but he's really the man about town over there at St. Charles Wealth Management. Welcome back. Welcome to the show, sir. Always happy to be here on a lovely August day where it's not a million degrees out. And Glad you're here. Let's give it a cheer for St. Charles. All right. And listeners, if you listen to the podcast, it's too late. But you guys should know by now, you should be trained as well, to, just to know anyway, around this time on Thursdays. Pay attention to our Twitter feed at Options, because we just tweeted out, we're about to tweet out anyway, Uncle Mike's selections for today's strategy block. So choose 
You guys get to control your own destiny, your own fate. It's like a choose your own adventure, this show. You get to choose which of those four strategies we're going to have on the show uh, today. First, his four choices he's putting out there. Uh, why marijuana investing won't work long term. Interesting. Number two, can Apple hit $2 trillion? Uh, interesting as well. Three, what will happen if we get a couple more rate hikes? And number four, <laughs> I think I know which one Sebastian's voting for. WWF champions, 1984 to 1988. Um, I might go vote myself. Uh, as our team is condensing those into Twitter size as we speak, so they should hopefully be live at options over there. So if you're listening live, you can go over there and uh, make your votes, make your, make your voices heard, really. Uh, meanwhile, though, we're going to keep on rolling into... The trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the block of trading, aka the trading block, and another another day, another another earnings announcement, set of earnings announcements, really, and just a whole bunch of craziness going on out here on the street today you know the narrative coming into monday show and into like the tuesday announcement of apple of course was can can apple save big tech can apple really turn this earning season around obviously it was kind of getting pretty dire there one after another of firms kind of disappointing and missing their numbers and kind of just setting the world on fire to the downside facebook the most infamous twitter didn't help either and a bunch of others really coming in on the heels of that and just just taking a, a beating out there in big tech so apple's earnings this time you could argue were some of the more important ones everyone was really focused on that would they really be the worm that turned the market and yes yeah, spoiler alert yes <laughs> in a nutshell yes they continue to sell i think the technical term is a bajillion iphones and everything else out there they were pretty much had they were up across the board you know watches and misc stuff was strong compared to year over year ago everything they pretty much do was up with the exception of what used to be their core business the max that's kind of the only sign of weakness in their uh, in their lineup everything else was kind of just uh, ridiculously strong so proving once again that apple can do that old one-two punch of earnings that earnings dance better than anybody oh we're terrible we suck we can't sell. oh wait surprise we sold everything they do it every quarter and uh, the analysts continue to fall for it which uh, always cracks me up speaking of analysis uh, we did a lot of it here on the show talking about what they were pricing in and what was actually delivered if you go over to the website right now theoptionsider.com uh, Matt and his team from Orats have put together the post earnings earnings move results report as well. So they're breaking down what was priced in and what actually got delivered here. If you look at Apple, uh, they were closing right around 190 going into their report. Uh, at the time, the report went out was about the stock was about 200. As of right now, they are at where did Apple 207.63. Spoiler alert: Of course, they are also the world's first one trillion dollar company. I'm not sure if you heard that kind of big news uh i think everyone's heard that by now <laughs> but uh, just a crazy town out there let's see what else in the earnings re result the actual earnings move was ten dollars and 12 cents they had priced in 670 on that straddle so dramatically outperforming uh there they were expecting of course uh, coming in expecting the vol about 25 percent uh the actual post vol was about 19.1 percent so look that's interesting to know as well kind of how much the vol comes in post uh, post these kinds of events uh, uncle mike we gotta start with you i guess then because you're uh, you're the uh, you're the apple well you're, you're you're what's left of the apple junkies here on the old squad used to be hardcore used to be really mainlining it hard into the veins these days not so much maybe recreationally on the weekends uh, that's kind of about it but uh, what's uh, what's your take on the crazy madness of apple hitting one trillion and everything else going on in today's market sir well i wish i could go back in time to all those days where you and mark uh, belittled me, made fun of me, uh, just said mean things about me for having such a big position in Apple. And uh, uh, kind of like the milk commercial back in the 80s when uh, they, they, they make fun of the kids and they say, but I've been drinking milk and then I'm going to be bigger than you someday. So that's kind of how uh, I kind of feel in some ways today. But the reality of it is it's not as big of a position in the portfolio as it once was. So I can't take too much credit for it. But uh, for many years, you know, the, Mike, I'm just saying blind squirrel, the blind squirrel finds, finds a nut every, every now and again, you know, but I've been drinking milk. You have been drinking milk. Thankfully, but, but, with, Thankfully. That, but with that being said, um, I now is the bully Cisco in this, uh, in this case, or is it uh, a different stock? 
Oh, or is it the environment? Oh, bringing up old wounds. I love it. Touche. I deserve that for bringing mm. the, everything up. But anyway, uh, with all that being said, this is a big day today. Apple does hit the trillion dollar mark. First stock in history to do it, arguably, uh, you, because it's the biggest stock ever in, in United States history. Then uh, you could say it's the best stock ever for in terms of size. Uh, I so agree. So uh, this is a very big day. I think that with um, uh, through the years with Apple, uh, a lot of the talk that you see in the financial media today was that uh, uh, Apple's they're not changing the world where they made their money the first time around or what, when back in the two saw days of Apple uh, was just inventing new products and changing the world in that uh they were. They invented the iPhone. They invented the iPod. For those of you that can even remember that far back, they invented the iPad uh, and all the things that they did that uh, changed the world. Uh, but now it's kind of taken a different evolution to the company in that uh, they're not changing the world anymore. They're profiting from the changes with which they were the first to make. Uh, they're no longer just selling the iPhones for a few hundred bucks. They're selling them for a thousand dollars and people are paying for them, quite honestly. Uh, they're not only uh, making a few bucks here and there uh, from iTunes, they're making quite a bit of money from it. So a lot of the money that they make now uh yes it does still come from from the iphone but uh what it also comes from is a lot of the just general revenue that they're getting from subscriptions to all the things with which they have so uh, i don't i still don't see them necessarily being the uh world changer that they once were but uh with that being said they are quite the profit machine at least as of the last earnings report to say the least yeah, they've done a lot of really good things. I like that. Um, and you know what's been interesting? I was I was talking to, to on a show about this. The, if you look at who's having a great quarter and who's not, it is people that actually make things are doing great, and people where kind of the product is you. The product is data. So your Amazons, your Facebooks, they're not doing well. Um, and you know. So it's just kind of I was unsurprised that Apple did so well this quarter, uh, and I think it's going to keep going. I, I think as important as it is that it's a trillion dollars, which, you know, is is, is really it's news. I, I care more about how quickly are they going to make their next hundred billion? I think that's what people need to th need to think about and, and analyze as they hold it in their portfolio is, you know, what where does it go next? And I, I'm kind of interested in. In your thoughts, um, Mike, and uh, in your thoughts, Mark. Oh, Uncle, I think right. Go ahead. Go ahead I think Mike. right now, with where where they're going to go, uh, the, I don't see the other thing you can say with Apple. I think they're going to continue to try and build out a lot of their uh, revenue sources in terms of the subscriptions and things like that. Uh, but the one thing that uh, Apple really has not pushed a lot, uh, and although I. I'm still not convinced it's going to be the greatest thing, but one thing that they have not pushed is wearables. Uh, and the other thing is that they invest billions. I believe it's, I think I, I'd read somewhere $14 billion per year, billion with a B in into uh, research and development. And at some point, if they can come up with a product that just kind of changes the world, then I think the stock could really go up a lot further. Uh, I don't know if uh, they're going to they, – I don't see them continuing to get this pace that they've had over the last year or so in terms of uh, gr for growth uh, without another big product. But what do I know? I've been saying that ever since I got out of the stock. You know, uh, you're right. It is it is something to watch. The, 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 I was speaking of the wearables. I was kind of surprised that the they call it, they kind of lump it in like a misc category. They don't really break out the wearables as a separate item. But if you if you do the math, you see that the wearables actually are are up pretty strong. Uh, their total wearable sales and of course their services, things like music and things like that, are really starting to generate meaningful billions with a B to the bottom line. As to before, when they used to call them experiments, now these things are actually <laughs> real fledgling or not even fledgling these are these make more money uh the wearables division probably makes more generates more it doesn't make more revenue but they probably keep more money from the wearables division than netflix does in all of their revenue uh so uh it's interesting to see kind of what's been going on with these things as the as these things continue i know they've dialed back everyone was waiting for the apple car and they kind of think they've dialed back that uh, little experiment so maybe not going to see the next earth-shaking item 
there from uh, from Apple as we keep on looking. Speaking of cars, another name popping off this week. You guys may have heard of, may be familiar with, begins with a T, ends with an A, and in the middle it has just a freaking huge move. It's Tesla. Uh, they're closing today, right? Almost 350, 349 half. They got as high as, oh, they didn't break 350. The 349.99 was the high uh, coming in uh, hot off of their earnings uh, on Wednesday yesterday? Uh, they were pricing in. Let's see, they were pricing in about eighteen and a quarter. So, spoiler alert: they outperformed that by about thirty handles. They moved forty-eight handles today. Uh, and they, they're historically they projected about fifteen and uh, fifteen thirty. They've actually moved about thirteen thirteen average uh, in their in past quarters. So, blowing the doors off it. In any way, shape, or form. You know, if you've been watching Tesla, you know the kind of the death march, the death watch really is on. People are waiting. We talk about these crazy puts. We'll get to them in a little bit again, uh, how much of those are trading these days. And yet uh, all of that, uh, all of that uh, just going up in smoke today. Uh, article Market Watch talking about the billions that uh, short sellers out there. Uh, there are many, including the, uh, the big short guy who's now famously short Tesla, uh, all taking a, a thrashing in, uh, in today's a market, uh, Mr. Meatball. Any of your any of your crazies in the pit chat uh, slinging a lot of Apple or Tesla? Uh, we're definitely slinging Apple today. I've been trading Apple to go higher for several days now, um, but uh, outside of that, it's been uh, not a lot of Tesla talk. I, you know, generally speaking, I don't trade Tesla because I have a a bias against the company. Um, I agree with our long term put buyer. However, I would kind of point out that this thing looks like it's starting to get what looks today looks more like a short squeeze than an actual deserves to be up $48. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the um, the uh, the September conversion and uh, it's it's not cheap to borrow stock from on, on Tesla. I think it looks like the borrowing cost is uh, somewhere uh, somewhere near a dollar. So, you know. I don't know about you, but I'm not much uh, that that to me typically m makes me think that there's some people being forced to cover. And, th and that could be as much of what drove the stock higher today as uh, as anything. I uh, I may be playing around. I, I'm, I'm I may be joining our uh, our one our 100 by 50 one by two put trader because I think that guy uh, that guy's on to something. There definitely are some of those piling in later. Uh, those straight-up puts are trading a ton as well. Again, we'll get to all that stuff. You mentioned the top of the show. We'll obviously do a deep dive into it tomorrow on Vol Views. But uh, today, uh, another another day where uh, the Vol shorts got a little bit of a smile on their face. Uh, most of the indices up, except for the Dow. The Dow is feeling like it's, it's just feeling – it wants to be the, 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 you know, the, the spoil sport of the party. Everybody else up, S&P up at half a percent. Q's up almost 1.5%. That means VIX taking a little bit of a break off nearly at full handle. How low did we go intraday? 1217 was the low, closing right around 1222. So uh, closing right near the lows. Our old friend VXX taking a little bit of an – exhale uh today as well getting as low as about 36 he actually had nearly a two-handle range got as high as 32 and a half showing kind of what topsy-turvy vol markets were in these days closing today right around 30 80 or so mr meatball uh, aside from gobbling up all those juicy puts what else were you up to in vxx today sir uh you know i had a uh, there was a trade that went up this morning on the open uh customer bought the august 31 uh september 7 27 put spread and uh, he did 2,000, so then I, 30, I looked at 31 31 7? The August 31, September 7, 27 put spread. So, oh, I see, uh, I see what you're saying. I, 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 thought yeah. you said, I thought the strikes were 31 and 7. I was like, that's an interesting no, thing. No, no, no. It was the, the August 31st, September 7th, uh, 27 put spread. Guy paid 15 cents. I liked that order. I, uh, I piggybacked him and... Uh, did a few myself at a slightly worse price, but uh, I'm still pretty happy with uh, the level I did it. Um, I, I, you know, pretty smart trade produces a theta, produces a bearish delta, uh, gets along a little vega. Uh, you hedge that you do that uh, delta neutral. You you've got a trade that's going to be pretty pretty nice. And uh, full disclosure, I did it uh, pretty close to delta neutral. Interesting. I'll have, to, I'll have to dig into. But it's, uh, it's an interesting one, Mark. Yeah. You know, if, if you get a, a big pop in VXX, you do great. And if you get the slow death, which is more what I'm expecting, 
you also do great. You only lose if there's some if VXX can manage to stay in one place for an entire month, which is pretty difficult. Yeah, I was thinking about that because you know, the, the, kind of the slow death. I think is kind of what a lot of people are kind of leaning towards, and uh, and how that shapes up in that scenario is uh, is kind of interesting. I like that. We'll have to again. We'll 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 table further discussion on that until. Uh, tomorrow's Vol Views show, where we get into a lot of all things short volatility, but still a lot of uh, interesting stuff popping off over there. There's some other names I should mention popping off after the bell today. We've got some names coming out after, including uh, after Activision. I don't have their straddle at hand here, so see what they're pricing in. But they closed today at 74, even uh, selling off in the after hours now, off about 230 or about three and a quarter percent. Hovering right around 71 half or so level out there in the after hours. So I uh, guess not a lot of love for Activision Blizzard. The other name, by the way, we have the, at least one of these in our poll this week. Uh, GoPro uh, closing today, 599. So a little bit shy of the six handle. Uh, and in the after hours, they're up 23 cents or nearly 4%. Uh, they were rallying a little bit higher, coming off that a little bit as well. I don't have either of those straddles on hand, but we'll keep an eye on those as we keep on rolling and by the way listeners get your votes in right now uh, choose long-term marijuana investing uh, can apple hit two trillion uh, should there be a more rate hikes or wwf champions 94 and 98 uh these are good we gotta teach uncle mike the uh, the brevity of twitter though so we could uh, squeeze more of that goodness in meanwhile we got to keep on rolling squeeze more goodness in it is time for the odd block It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, we got breaking stuff coming here to The Odd Block. Uh, Mr. Meatball, uh, keen eye there, pointing out take two. Uh, and also another uh, another publisher out there. Uh, they closed today up a buck, one thirteen and a quarter. They're they're halted right now. Uh, so something is afoot. They're pricing more. It's up uh, up six. Nice pop. And they're pricing at what about eight bucks? Looks like. Yep. Wow. It's so it's trading uh, one nineteen now one twenty. So my guess is they did well. I must be. Uh, what what games does Take Two make? I believe they're, uh, I think they're do, uh, I think they Are do they Rockstar, Grand Theft, Grand Theft Auto, all that Rockstar stuff is them, yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's why. They probably announced, uh, you know, something awesome. They're probably looking ahead to the big, uh, what's the cowboy game that everybody's excited about, I forgot. Oh, Red Dead Redemption's going to be coming out, uh, uh, I think, later this uh, year. That, bringing, that'll be a huge yeah, one, I think, for them, so they're probably looking, probably, yeah. probably issued some good guidance for that. Of course, that should be baked into the stock. That's not a, that's not a surprise that that's coming out. I mean, let's, let's be clear, though, the... Uh, what was it? The uh, t- uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City might have been the all-time greatest commercial for a video game in history. You, that, you just like the, the neon with 80s. With the flock of the seagulls <laughs> running and them all shooting each other. You love neon that 80s. That was an amazing commercial. You know, I think maybe they're also popping on the fact that that stupid, whatever it was, Grand Theft Auto V came out how many years ago? It's still, it sold 95 million copies. The thing continues to sell many years it's, later. It just, they can't yeah, stop just, selling that game. So maybe no, this, I know. just the volume of sales they have there alone uh, could also be part of the reason why the stock is just on fire. Maybe they're uh, stealing a little bit of the thunder from the old Activision Blizzard folks who uh, all of a sudden, uh, they can't find any love anymore. But you know who did find the love? We talked about them earlier. Uh, our old friends, also in the T department, Tesla, like I mentioned, just rally ho mode today. Let's go out to our friends. Let's see if a big upside day has any impact on these crazy far out of the money puts here. The Jan 2019 50 puts and spoiler alert. Yes, they traded hot and heavy again today. They're 64 cents at 70 right now. So getting back close to where they were when we first spotted them well over a year ago when they were start, first started trading size. I think they were in that 35 to 50 odd cent range. So we're getting back down there after hitting a peak of around three bucks not too long ago. These things, again, if you want to see just, just Vega 
just pure Vega at work. Forget Delta, anything, just pure Vega. That's, what, that's all these things. That's all these puts got. They got no Delta. Uh, and that's just the scope of the movement we've seen in these things. Uh, it's, it's pretty impressive uh, from 30 odd cents to close to three bucks to back down to 64 cents. Uh, today, hitting up 2,619 of these bad boys. Uh, OI hovering at 62, almost 63,000. Also worth noting the PARs, the Jan 2019 PAR puts, 2,000 of those going up. So maybe Mr. Meatball. Some of your theory about uh, put spread is starting to leg in there, starting to come on. I know initially it was all the 50 puts, but now the pars seem like they're getting uh, some attention. In fact, it was a whole put strip, almost 600 of the 20 puts going up today, almost 600 of the 25 puts, maybe another vertical there, almost 200 of the 10 puts. Are, are those as exciting for you as the VXX Jan 10 puts, the Tesla Jan 10 puts, sir? The Teslas are less exciting to me than those VXX ones, but... Um, I, you know, I continue to think that all that put buying is just bondholders hedging themselves. You're going to start seeing, I would say, similar paper in uh, in Tesla in the 20s. Uh, probably pretty. I mean, there's already 20,000 of the Jan 2020 par puts and um, and 50 puts uh, in Tesla right now. There, that is an open interest that is growing. Quickly, and I, I'm almost certain that's the bondholders, and uh, probably some people playing for uh, when they eventually have to go get cash. I, I, I love the fact that 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 peop, that guy is allowed to go on and basically almost lie. I'm not going to say he's lying, but almost lie. I'm going to say set lofty, unrealistic goals, and every and it's got such a cult following that people uh, just kind of buy the stock it's pretty impressive kind of ceo job right set lofty unrealistic goals as long as you can sell the analysts in the street on it i guess you're doing your job right <laughs> well i don't know yeah we'll see the deep the deeply cynical person in me uh <laughs> that's 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 the view that's the modern ceo role yeah just uh just cow win over the analysts in the street and uh, everything else apparently is uh is moot uh, all the Tesla lovers and haters, I'm sure, will uh, will be chiming in on uh, that one. Also worth noting, uh, longer term puts. By the way, you mentioned the, the debt holders. Uh, there is something to that as well. We've talked a lot about the CDS uh, sellers hedging out there. Someone wrote in recently that uh, he was at a conference or saw a conference somewhere where uh, a hedge fund was talking up how they own a lot of Tesla uh, bonds and they were uh, hedging with these puts themselves. I'll have to go dig up and see exactly which fund it is, but they specifically mentioned they were trading these 50 puts. So uh, apparently a lot of players in line for far, far out of the money puts in Tesla, including in Jan 2020, 1,628 of the Jan 2020 par puts going up today on open interest of 20,500, almost 700 of the 50 puts on open interest of 22,500 and change of the 20 puts on open interest of 12, almost 13,000, uh, even 75 of the 10 puts in 2020 lighting it up today. So yeah, long-term puts continue to be where the action is in Tesla land, listeners. So if you're not uh, not paying attention to this story, uh, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Let's move on instead uh, while our votes are still coming in here for the Uncle Mike Palooza. Uh, interesting. What's winning so far is not what I expected. So get out there, listeners, and change that up unless you want to really uh, talk about rate hikes, in which case, <laughs> I guess apparently you do so far. We got time yet. We got another, I don't know, 10 minutes. So make your voices heard. As we get on into uh, Williams and Companies, typical symbol, excuse me, WMB closing today, 31 bucks, up about 91 cents or about 3%. Uh, this is, uh, these are a, uh, these are a energy infrastructure company, I should say, uh, out here. And they do about 6,900 contracts a day. Today doing about 32,000, six to one calls over puts, including what looks like, uh, Bit of a perhaps maybe call uh, overwriting Palooza out here in September in particular. What do we got here? The SEP 32s lighting it up uh, over 10,000 times, including a block of 10,000 hitting the tape for 50 cents. It's like a penny off of uh, the bid uh, 10,000 times. Total about 10,300 going up. Looks like no, no OI to speak of. So clearly all opening paper. This is, again, about a handle north of where we are right now so maybe perhaps an overrider taking advantage of today's pop to get a little bit extra juice and get himself a nice 50 cents through uh through september expiration let's take a look at the chart here and see what the heck's been up in in wmb over the past year a year ago it was not that far from where it is now right around 31 and a half so about 50 cents north of where it is right now 
Got as high as 33 and a half, almost 34 back in Jan. And then it kind of sold off pretty aggressively down to about 24 back in April. So not too long ago. It's had quite the quite the range. <laughs> so it's been all over the place. Now back after earnings is kind of back on uh, the middle to upper band of that range, right around 31. Uh, Mr. Meatball, what do you think? I think this has the feel of uh, a stockholder. Maybe looking for an exit at 32 cents or looking to more, maybe more likely pocket a nice juicy 50 cents here, sir? I'm thinking it's uh, the latter, trying to pocket that that juicy, delicious, sopping wet 50 cents. That's some good juice, sir, compared to some other things we've I seen. I like the juice. Some <laughs> compared, the juice is good. Compared to some other, uh, some other trades we've seen for yield of late. 50 cents, you can't really sneeze at it. Uh, for a month too bad our old buddy mr Grigas is in on the show today because this name i know was his favorite he was the biggest groupon bull slash defender we had on the show uh he might have liked this one of course talking groupon this is our resident uh cheapy of the day four dollars and 74 cents so if tesla 350 a little bit too rich for your blood don't worry we got you covered uh to the tune of four dollars and 74 cents here uh, with groupon up about 13 cents or about uh, about almost three percent these guys have earnings tomorrow before the open and what we saw out here today looks like an interesting bit of a ratio a bit of a one by two going up here in good old uh in good old groupon looks like perhaps the five five half uh, ratio one by two paper selling oh, well the ratios changed towards the end of the day it looked up went up earlier today at least uh, eight by one by two, eight thousand of the AUG five calls expiring on the third. So these are one day to go. So this is a very earnings focused trade, listeners. Uh, selling looks like looks like about selling eight thousand of the AUG five calls expiring tomorrow for twenty seven cents, right on the bid. And then turns around and trades the five halves sixteen thousand times, so two x for eleven cents, which was actually like three cents below the bid, which is kind of weird. But I think the bid kind of tightened up when the spread came in because they were they were much wider. I think before this they were like four at twenty five. So I'm gonna lean towards selling one, buying two here of these uh, five five half call spread expiring tomorrow. Uh, worth noting, no real OI to speak of on either of these strikes, at least nowhere to the size we're looking at. As the day finished, actually 10,000 of the fives traded and 17,000 of the five halves. So uh, interesting stuff, if that is indeed as the paper plays out here. Yeah, interesting stuff, a one by two, uh, selling one, buying two. So, of course, listeners, you need this thing to, to get a little bit of a move on by uh, tomorrow. Let's see here at the chart, looking back a year. Uh, a year ago, Groupon was trading 365, so uh, about a buck and change south of where it is today. Got as high as almost six bucks back in December. Then it kind of has been vacillating all over the place, back down to four and a quarter again back in just this month in, or last month of July. So it's been kind of all over the place, kind of at the middle to upper band of that range right now. Mr. Meatball, this is a kind of a funky one. Selling one, buying two. So selling one, 25 cent out of the money calls, buying perhaps two uh, 75 cent all the money calls in calls that expire tomorrow, sir, the day of earnings. What say you, sir? Uh, they're looking for a move. They're looking for a, quite the move. Um, or it could be kind of a, uh, a, a, some sort of close and roll, but my guess is, uh, it, they're looking for a move. Uh, the amount of OI, this is, this is definitely opening. Uh, so it looks yeah. like someone's got, so, uh, got the uh, moving pants for on move. for Groupon. Yeah, I think it's, it sounds like Grigas. I'll have to call him up and see if this was him. It, uh, it could be. I, it's a very Grigian type move. I miss that guy. How's I'm, he doing? I haven't talked to him in a while, but I hear he's doing pretty well. He's been uh, promoted up the ranks over there in Schwabland. So, uh, I, yeah, love him. I ran into him on the train one time, and uh, we had we enjoyed a train beer together. He didn't run away screaming to the other car. That's a good sign, I guess. No, no, no. It was it was it was nice. He's a good dude. Must have been unusual for you because I know usually when you get into the train car, that's kind of what happens, right? But it's good. You have the train car hey, to yourself. What, what episode what episode is this mark what number oh, i'll have to go look. yeah i'll have to go look i have to check in with uh with my crack team here to see if they could uh they could tell me <laughs> while i keep on I'm, I'm interested let me I'll, been, I'll, uh, I'll, you know where so i might many. go i might go to option insider the option yeah i'm, I'm going that's what i'm doing as well i'm going to my website right now and i'm gonna see if i can <laughs> we are on this is episode 735 <laughs> all right well we gotta do something for 750 don't we sure let's do it what do you got in mind i don't know 
What what does the audience think we should do for show 750? We're already blowing their minds with uh, time changes and everything else. But if you want something fun for episode 750 listeners, maybe we'll bring back Grigas because he can't. I don't think he's allowed to talk anymore. So uh, no, <laughs> he's not. We'll we'll so maybe we'll bring back yeah, everybody bring who's back been the kicked off. The sh- let's get yeah. everybody that's ever been on and then kicked off the show. <laughs> there we go. We'll dig them all up. That's Tim a, the Bobby. That's a long list. Uh, Bob uh, Rob Rob Kurzakowski over there. I did yeah. see the Viceroy not too long ago. He's he's doing well over there in the family office land. Uh, he might be interested in coming back on talking all things. Oh he'll, he'll, he'll be. Psyched to talk macro with you, Uncle Mike. So there we go. Uh, speaking of talking things. All right, so there you have it, audience. Uh, if you want us to do something special for show 750, tweet at Mark, uh, which is at the Options Insider, at Options. Tweet at Options and tell us what you think we should do for show 750. Yeah, get at us. Hit us up. Meanwhile, we have to tally your votes, listeners. It's time for Uncle Mike to hold court. It is time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. Well, <laughs> these are interesting results here for our voting. We had uh, we had to truncate Uncle Mike's uh, longer uh, thoughts a little bit. So it went out as more rate hikes, question mark. <laughs> and apparently people want to talk about that because 40% of you guys voted for that. Only 30% coming in for the WWF champs, uh, 1984 to 1988. 20% for Apple. No Apple love today. That's surprising. Uh, 20, 20% saying can Apple hit $2 trillion, And only 10% saying uh, marijuana investing won't work. So, Uncle Mike, I guess uh, you have your topic for the day, which I think, as you put it, was what will happen if we get a couple more rate hikes? There you go, sir. Have at it. Got to say I was surprised. I I wouldn't have guessed that would have been the winner. I I would not Um, have guessed that in a million years, but our audience is sometimes surprising and or just silly. For sure, for sure. But we got a close second with the WWF, so we're getting closer. One of these weeks we'll get to do the WWF history in the 80s. We'll we'll get there. Um, So the best. Why wouldn't we people want that? I want to hear all about uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Hillbilly Jim and – Bob Backlund and Hulk you have Hogan. no idea of the history of the historical knowledge I have of eighties professional wrestling. It's it's uh, Tito I, Santana. Yeah. Who else we got? We got Jake uh, the Snake, Hulk Hogan, the Andre, Snake, Ravishing Rick Rude, Mister Perfect. I can go on. Mister so Perfect, the yeah. Hitman, the Heart Foundation. I mean, you can, think, think about the Royal Rumble you could have with just the dead wrestlers alone. <laughs> that, would the be, Warrior, that would be the best, Man. the best Royal Rumble of all time, definitely. It would be the best Royal Rumble of all time. God's having quite the, Roy, the quite the show up there in heaven. I with know. All these right pro now, wrestlers. I think there's a Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior match going on as we speak. That's my guess. I can only That's hope my... that would be too awesome. That would be my guess, but with Miss Elizabeth in, in Randy's quarter. Of course. But anyhow, let's talk about something not quite as exciting, but still pretty darn exciting, I think. And that is interest rates. Um, We're not quite at a stage to where we were a few years back in terms of uh, the interest rates moving the markets like they did. Uh, We had, in fact, on Monday's show for Around the Block, no one even mentioned the interest rate. Uh, announcements that were that took place yesterday is in something for around the block. It's like we don't even care anymore. But it is something with which that we need to think about because uh, w- from what it sounds like, the main scuttlebutt of what's going on these days is that uh, a lot of people are expecting two more rate hikes this year and possibly two rate hikes next year. And uh, from there, it sounds like uh, at least a lot, what a lot of the general consensus is, is that the Fed's going to then uh, pause for a while and consider interest rates. Uh, and I'm doing air quotes right now. You can't see it, but I'm doing it normal. Uh, and then uh, we'll be where we want to be in terms of uh, our economy. So how does this affect us and what's going to happen to the market or what are some p- potential implications of it? Uh, where do we go from here? So. First off, let's say that we have, I think that it's very likely that we're going to have a few more rate hikes, whether it's going to be two, three, or four in the next year, I don't know. Uh, But I would say with very um, 
strong conviction. I believe we're going to have at least two, uh, and I really don't think we're going to have any more than four. Uh, but when we have that, what are going to be some of the economic implications of it? Well, uh, from the bad standpoint of higher interest rates, and let's just kind of go to elementary interest rates 101 here, uh, if interest rates are higher, then companies do not have as much uh, borrowing power because of the fact that they're going to have to pay a higher interest rate to borrow money. And because of that, the argument is, is that uh, we won't have as much economic growth. Now, on the other side of it, though, here's the benefit of it is that let's say we have higher interest rates. Well, if that's the case, then banks can typically make more money on higher spreads because they're charging higher interest rates. And just in Investors in general can make more money off of fixed income investments such as CDs, bonds, whatever the case may be. And then the argument may be that people that are in that class who typically have a lot more money may put more money into the economy because they're spending more money because they're getting more money on uh, grandpa's CDs or paying a little bit more this month. So he's going to take the kids out to McDonald's one more time. Uh, so that's kind of the argument for and against higher interest rates. I'm of the school of thought over the course of the next couple of years with, with these with uh, the potential of the interest rate hikes. I don't think it's going to have a major effect on markets in general. Uh, reason number one, most people are expecting it. It's not going to be a very big surprise. Uh, the only real surprise, I think, is more short term related on when they're going to do it. Are they going to do it at the next meeting? Are they going to wait a few more months? I think that's where the, the only uh, major debate is happening right now in terms of interest rates is uh, not necessarily will they, won't they, but when will they do, actually do it? Uh, so with that being said, I think it's going to happen. So I think things are factored in. Now, here's the other side of the coin. I've talked about this on the show. I haven't in a, in a while, but financials make up a big part of our market. And in general, I believe that if we have higher interest rates, uh, that it would be good for the financial institutions, uh, such as the uh, Chase, Goldman, uh, the, uh, uh, the banks, the brokerages, whatever, the, whatever one you want to look at. And the reason for that is because, like I said earlier, the higher spreads, uh, but also uh, you actually are able to charge margin again in the brokerage world. Yeah, they do charge it at this point in time, but uh, if we do have higher interest rates and if we have higher interest rates as we're having a bull market, then there's going to be more demand for people to actually have more risk and actually use such margins. And if financials go higher, then I believe that markets can go higher. And so with that being said, uh, I believe that it's not going to have too much of an effect be a negative effect because number one, it's already factored in. And number two, I think it would be good for financials, which in turn would be good for the market. Now that is my strategy block for today, August 2nd. And I look forward to next week's strategy block. You know, it's funny. We just had the uh, senior economist from the CME on our, our TRIFO show about an hour ago. And he was talking about, they're actually starting to build into their models. Uh, maybe uh, what goes up must come down in terms of rates and maybe next year, uh, some, re, you know, uh, recessionary type uh, events and maybe the Fed actually taking some steps to dial that back. Uh, so hiking this year and then dialing it back next year. What do you think about that, Uncle Mike? Uh, you know, it's possible, but uh, I don't I think that I don't see the Fed reacting being quite that quick of a reactionary, especially when they um just just went through all the raises that they've they've had and the reason is is that would mean that they'd have to admit that they've made mistakes or at least have to come up with some type of language saying that we've made mistakes by by raising them as much as we did so i i don't personally don't see that happening yeah i was a little surprised that they were uh, they were taking that uh, such into consideration that would be a remarkable and near term about face for the fed they're not known for such things but uh, i've seen crazier things the fed watch tool over there at cme group uh, showing some interesting stuff check it out as we keep on rolling we got a little bit of time so let's get a little bit of your questions it's time for the old mail block it's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails tweets facebook messages website comments and much more it's time for the mail block 
All right, welcome to the mail block, uh, the portion of the show where uh, we, uh, you guys ask us questions. Sometimes we turn the tables on you and ask questions. We have a good Twitter poll going on right now. Speaking of which, you guys just, speaking of Twitter and 80s, <laughs> you guys talking 80s wrestlers before. I was looking at the results of our poll, and I see the people who run the Board of Trade building just tweeted out a photo of Optimus Prime battling Decepticons in front of the Board of Trade building in the Transformers movie they filmed here a couple of years ago. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun one. Uh, the movie terrible, but uh, the photo was fun. So take a look at that. Uh, <laughs> listen, it's a little bit of a Chicago love there in the Transformers. A little board of trade there in the background. All right, this week we asked you in earnings season, still hot and heavy. Uh, which names are going to dominate your options trading this week? Gave you four choices: uh, the fruit company, Apple, the car company, Tesla, the action cam company, GoPro, and the volatility company, aka SIBO. Uh, hot and heavy voting. Uh, let's go back to the meatball. Mr. Meatball, what do you think is winning our poll? And what is your vote, sir? I know you love Sling and SIBO. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you, I love what and what? You love slinging yourself some SIBO options. But uh, four I, choices. What's people, where are people trading this week? Apple, Tesla, GoPro, or SIBO? They're not trading SIBO. I can tell you that much. Uh, they're not trading GoPro. Uh, and they're not. Um, it, it, so it would be Tesla or Apple. And... Being as how Apple is the most wi- is super widely held, I'm going to say Apple, and I'm going to agree. Apple. So Meatball votes for SIBO, and uh, mm-hmm. says the audience votes for Apple. Mr., uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is your vote, and what is our audience voting for, more importantly? Sticking to my Monday vote, Apple and a- Apple all the way. <clears throat> well, it's a hot and heavy battle, but so far coming into the final uh, day or so here, we got Apple at 46%. Tesla, hot on his heels with 42%. Uh, only 7% for poor SIBO. So no love for uh, SIBO. They have earnings tomorrow. So I thought maybe some love for that one. And uh, 5% for GoPro. So GoPro, oh, how the mighty have fallen. They, people used to love that name. They were all excited about it. These days, not so much. Let me see here. i really find a good one here. Um, this guys writing into this show for bxx stuff that's probably more for ball views uh let's see ball views ball views ball views um people send this stuff into the wrong show uh let's see here uh here's an interesting one uh probably also want to discuss this on our advisor show but we'll, we'll touch it here too people send them all kinds of stuff to this show uh andrew lane says he tried searching for options on the adva- major Financial advisor news sources, including pensions and investments and financial advisors magazine. And he came up blank. Why do these mainstream outlets ignore this space? Where should I go to learn more about options for advisors? Well, I'm going to do a shameless plug and pl- tweet our plug our advisors option show. It's kind of right there in the title. Uh, we do that with OCC and uh, the folks over there at Swan and the folks over there at Orats. So uh, interesting show. Check that out wherever you find our stuff. It's there once a month, nice and low frequency. Because, you know, advisors are busy. I don't have time to tune in much more than that. And so we cover all this good stuff. So, yeah, you can go there. Also, OIC has a great resource there. You go to their optionseducation.org. Look at the right-hand side of that page. You'll see the tab for advisors. Click on that. You'll have to create a login. So it's a bit of a pain. But once you get past that, all sorts of great data and resources uh, for all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, as the resident advisor here, sir, uh, where should Andrew Lane learn? Where should he go to learn more about options for advisors, sir? Besides uh, St. Charles Wealth dot com, of course. Of course, of course. I the OCC is a great system there. Uh, Eric Cott does a great job over there uh, with what he's doing. And uh, in terms of trying to spread the word amongst advisors, it's a great product for advisors and uh, <clears> option pit to do it. Uh, and the other one, um, um, I I forget Andrew Giovinazzi. He's this guy over at option pit. He's pretty good, but the other guy at option pit, uh, he's a little bit suspect on it, but uh, they, they do help advisors over there. And and I'll be, and I'll, I'm going to give a shameless plug to option pit as well. Uh, whenever I do run into a question with volatility or how a certain thing might be trading or need some thoughts, I, I do call Andrew and Mark, um, mostly Andrew, no offense, Mark, but Andrew's a little easier to get a hold of. Um, but, uh, but with that, I do call those guys on a very serious note. Uh, and I manage uh, real people's retirement money. Uh, we, we do real trades with real money. And uh, I seek advice from them if it's something that uh, it's out of my world. So uh, I think they, they do a great job. And uh, just to return the, the endorsement, 
uh, the part of my dollars that I don't want to have to manage and worry about, I have sitting with uh, Mike Tusa. He has both of my kids' college funds. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of clients that are actually advisors that we work with. Um, you know, I'll have a, an advisor come in for a week, and we'll actually, I'll actually help him build model portfolios for his clients. Obviously, he does his own tweaking. I don't have any interaction with the client themselves. Um, but I, I do lots of work with uh, with advisors, helping them understand and, and get better with options. And the ones that understand it, helping them. Uh, do, we also do optimization and uh, implementation uh, for advisors as well. So you've got a, an option plan that you want to use. We'll help you optimize it. And if you don't use options and want to, we'll help you build a plan to implement an options trading program. So if you want to be like Mike, come see Mark. That's the way I would say it. I would put it. <laughs> I like that. That's good. I was not expecting uh, you guys to do as much with the uh, RIAs and the asset management crowd. I didn't think that was uh, that was a big business. You would be surprised. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a larger piece. We did a look. It was a larger piece of our – we were surprised there as well. It was a larger piece of our business than we, uh, we realized. That's actually anecdotally good, right? That shows the interest is growing out there. Uh, yes. As uh, as the uh, as the folks are starting to learn, hopefully from shows like ours and from places like OIC and everything else, getting the good word out there about, hey, maybe you could buy a put spread for your clients or you sell a call. Or maybe you do both if you want to go really crazy uh, as you're managing people's money out there. Never, never too late to learn a little bit about the old options. Meanwhile, let's keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we break down and then we tell you what, really what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week. Into the old weekend, we mentioned a few names that were popping off after the bell here today. Listen, let's check in on them really quickly. Uh, Activision Blizzard, uh, they closed at 74 bucks. They're off about a buck in the after hours, right around 73. So about one and actually just ticked exactly 73, so off about one and a half percent. Excuse me, GoPro, the name none of you clearly want to trade, <laughs> is uh, closed at 599 and it looks like maybe you missed your chance to sell some premium out here. I'll have to look and see how rich it was. Probably not too rich. It was a $6 stock. Uh, it's off a whopping $0.09 cents here uh, in the after hours. So pretty much unched. Let's just go look here really quickly at uh, how much juice they were pricing. It closed at 6 bucks. So it was about $0.80, cents, $0.82. Cents. So not bad. A little bit if it holds here. You, you kept looks like you're keeping a, a fair chunk of that. And, of course, uh, the big mover and shaker here in the after hours was or is really take two uh 113 and a quarter is where they close up a buck uh in the after hours trading 122 and a half up nine and a quarter a little over eight percent they're pricing in about eight bucks so out doing that to the upside and uh apparently uh apparently rally ho uh not so much for blizzard but definitely it looks like for take two let's go back around the horn let's start with uh, the greasies and meatballs what are you watching for the rest of this week into the weekend, sir? At least until we talk again on Bob News tomorrow. <laughs> Not non-farm payrolls, and at this point, I feel like oh, who trade watches stuff, that? Who watches such yeah, things? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, and at this point, I feel like the only way we're going to move on trade stuff is in a positive direction. Um, you know, if we saw that based on the price action today, uh, we're just going to go straight up. Uh, you know, if um, we get some sort of trade resolution, so. I don't feel like any new uh, shoes to drop on the trade side are going to be that negative for the market anymore. Mr. Uncle Mike, are you feeling as optimistic as the meatball, sir? I'm always optimistic. You know that, Mark. But uh, you know, the, the, to add to what Mark said in terms of the non-farm payrolls, uh, as well as uh, the trade news, uh, not having any more, more shoes to drop, uh, we're really close to all-time highs again. And... We're, we're probably roughly 40 points, 40 S&P points away approximately right now. And so we got to get through that before we, we have another straight up market. But uh, I think that's going to that's the next point of resistance for obvious reasons. And then uh, when we get through that, uh, I might get to say my trademark saying again, hopefully Monday. We shall see. Hopefully, indeed, for all the bulls out there, for the bears, they're hoping not so much. That music, listeners. 
means we've come to the end of another epic journey, our 735th journey <laughs> through the world of options. Talk some of your favorites today, some Tesla, some Apple, some VIX, some VXX. If you like the latter, tomorrow, Bob Views, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk a lot more of that. Uh, got some guests lined up, all sorts of fun stuff coming on uh, for the show tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. VIX, VXX, uh, X, uh, not XIV so much anymore, but <laughs> XVXY, UVXY, all that fun stuff. But we'll get into all that tomorrow. But before we go, let's go back around the horn one last time and check with everybody, see what they got cooking. That may start with you. Let's start with uh, Uncle Mike, sir. Sir, what's cooking? If I want to learn more about all this fun stuff you got going on, I want to check out this cool box you got on your website. Where should I go? What should I do? By all means, visit my website at stcharleswealth.com. And also, uh, if you would like an advisor who's not afraid of the words theoretical value, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to work with you in any way, shape, or form that works best for both of us. Uh, and uh, we will be having a slew of educational events coming up in September here in St. Charles. So uh, stay tuned for that. Well, how, what are your feelings, though, on extrinsic value? How do you feel about that? That's another episode. Okay, so I, I can't come to you for my uh, for my help with that. Okay, shucks. I was looking forward to having a nice chat about that over some Skippy Zeros. We'll have to table that until Monday. And Mr. Meatball, sir, you mentioned all the RIAs come into the land of the pit. If someone wants to join this flood of RIAs or maybe retail folks or whatever the heck they might be, maybe they're housewives in Des Moines. They just want to learn about options. Where should they go? What should they do? Uh, go to optionpit.com. We, we put out a blog every day. We put out videos every day. Uh, check out what we're up to. It's uh, worth your time. There you go. Option Pit, big with RIAs, and surprisingly with the Housewives in Des Moines. Two huge market segments for them. Check them out, optionpit.com, to learn more. On behalf of the Meatball and the Rock Lobster, who's out there somewhere doing whatever the heck he's doing. Hope he's having fun. And, of course, Uncle Mike and you, myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, all the fun stuff that you do, asking so many questions, voting in our poll, listening to the live stream, all the cool stuff that you guys do. We love you. And we'll see you back here for this show on Monday. Unless you want to tune in for Vol Views tomorrow, then we'll see you back tomorrow for a little bit more Volatility Views. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 